Hey guys, what's up? It's just Connor here, and today I'm with Riley. How you doing, bro? Hey guys, Connor. Welcome to our first uh, in-person client case study interview. Uh, I was actually just flying through from Tasmania to Melbourne to Sydney. I was just passing through the past two days, and Riley just had such a great month that I had to come and get him on the channel because I think a lot of you guys will find a lot of value in this one. Uh, Ryan and I go quite a far back now. I'd probably say yeah. it'd be close to over a year and a bit. Yeah, something I've been here. close around now, yeah, yeah. Some of that range. And I think Riley has such an inspiring story like everyone else that I've been interviewed on the, ch on the channel. Going from, you know, working in the trades to, uh, what was the commission that you hit this month? Uh, 17K. 17K at how old? 22. 22, right. So 23 now, actually. 23 Jeez. now, 23 now. So... 17,000 in commissions in one month, um, and he's been at the game for a long time. He's had a lot of stuff he's gone through, very similar to my path and journey. And yeah, I wanted to come and share with you guys. So, dude, let's, let's go a little bit way back, uh, I guess, when we first met. Sure. How, how were we first introduced? Um, how did you find out about me? And what was the conversation that we had almost over a year ago? Yeah, yeah. So we had a conversation due to uh, one of your good friends, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was going for a bit of a bit of a struggle, which you do with sales, ebbs and flows. Yep. And uh, he said, check out my mate Connor, jump on, have a conversation with him. And I, I remember when we first had that first conversation, uh, you mentioned that we would meet one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it's good to see that come to light. But just some of the stuff you talk about with networking and, you know, sales skills in general, it, it's cool to kind of see it all play out in front of me. Yeah, 100%. And I think back then, what was so crazy about Riley is I remember him literally saying that he was going to get equity out of his, out his, house. Out of his house to, to join the program, <laughs> which I don't think you eventually had to do anyway. No, I didn't have to, fortunately enough. Um, but yeah, he, he undertook, uh, like many of the guys that I coach and train, uh, he undertook a competitor's training, which we will not name. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's a, uh, I mean, before we go into like all your, I guess, your background, your story, and your past, Talk a bit, a little bit about your experience, like getting into the industry, what your expectations were, how you kind of didn't really get what you actually needed yeah. without using names, obviously. But like, I'd like to hear a little bit about that. Of course. Yeah, one of the big ones is just, you kind of see that laptop lifestyle. You're gonna jump in, you're gonna make 10K right off the bat, yeah. and you're gonna be sitting by the beach closing deals and you know, <laughs> sold the dream, so to speak. Mm. And you quickly realize that isn't the case. Yeah. Um, and I'd say another big one is just how, like, how important having real skin in the game from your trainers actually is yeah. because they're just so adapt and they can, they can see what's going on in the industry. And that's one thing that was missing with some previous training I did, I feel. Yeah. Just outdated. Yeah, and you were pretty stuck at that point, right? Yeah. Because, like, what, what type of offers were you working on back then? Well, back then, like, I was struggling to even find offers. Like... Mm. <laughs> I remember I was working for an agency, only sales guy uh, within the business, Yeah, yep. uh, which is good for, in terms of getting that experience because you have to fill in so many holes. Yeah. But in terms of making money, which everyone gets in there for, uh, no, not the case. There wasn't so much. I remember, I remember you spoke to me on that call and I was like, yeah, dude, like it's, it's offer that's the problem. Yeah. But it's like, unless you have someone with experience or someone who's been in the industry at least for a little bit, they're not going to really be able to tell you point blank. Yes. Obviously, this offer is not going to make you money. Exactly. But like when you're a beginner and you're new, it's really easy to just take on an offer because you feel like it's good, but you don't really know whether or not it's going to make you money or not. Mm -hmm. Or you believe that it's going to eventually. You have faith in the business owner because you get uh, indoctrinated, 100%. I would say. Yeah. Because you, you're new, you're young, you're fresh, and you spend time with these entrepreneurs and you kind of start to put them on a pedestal a little bit. Yeah, 100%. Go, oh, like I don't, I don't want to risk this relationship. I don't want to lose that thing, um, which, you know, when I first got started, I got on the track with that very, very easily. It's a huge one. And people get sold the dream and then they, they end up just becoming free labor to yep. the business owner, basically. Yep. And people forget that these business owners are often really good sales guys. So mm -hmm. they, they can see that hunger and determination in you. Uh, but they kind of use that to their advantage of testing things and, and, and telling you those, those lies. So it's a big trap I see a lot of beginners fall into, unfortunately. 100%. And I think 
going back before you met me, because I want to give the guys insight to what you did before sales and, and what you were doing and what life was like generally for you. Sure. Um, so like what made you, what made you take that leap into to high ticket sales in the first place? <laughs> what were you doing? What were yeah. your beliefs? Everything like that. Yeah, it's an interesting one. And I'm sure a lot of people uh, are going to kind of relate to this. How I first got into sales uh, from a very famous man named Andrew Tate. So I was actually <laughs> uh, listening to one of his podcasts and he was talking about how if he had to go back and get any job, it would be a sales job because no one fa uh, fires the top rep. He can do pretty much whatever he wants. You can make good money. And it really had me thinking about, you know, what do I want to do in life? Because I was working the same job for six years uh, in civil construction, big days, hard labor. It's not really that that really brings you down. It's more so, I guess you can say that lack of fulfillment. Yep. That's what can really bring us down. Mm. So I joined Hustlers University and I ran into your friend Daniel. Yep. <laughs> and I had a lot of relatability to him just because young guy, Australian, trying to live in, live in the life that I wanted to live. So, you know, I really took a liking to him and, and listened to what he had to say. And I told him my plan, laid it all out. I said, hey, this is my situation. This is what I want to do. He goes, man, go get a sales job, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> like, it will give you a newfound uh, love for life. So I believe that was a Wednesday. <laughs> on the Saturday, I was on a sales call, put down a deposit, uh, jumped right in. Uh, but it wasn't until, so that was in November, it wasn't until April where I actually made that jump. Mm. Uh, because, again, Vince sold the lie of, you can do sales while you still do your full-time job. No, yeah. You see a lot of people try. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just, it's just not, and, and I'm happy to be proven wrong on yep. this. Yeah, yeah. But I haven't seen it been executed right. Um, so I put in 12 weeks resignation, uh, 12 weeks uh, holiday, nice. sorry. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I need to find a job. So I just locked down, learned some skills, role playing with dudes, and then got an offer, handed in the two weeks notice, and then uh, yeah, ran it up from there. Yeah, it's so sick, dude. Because um, so many people think that it is, and that's why I like to talk about the YouTube channel all the time, like it's not easy. Yeah. And I want to talk about, I guess, the trials and tribulations you've gone through the past year, because it's fantastic. It was 17K, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 17K in a month, that's amazing. But to get there is not what most people see. No. Because for myself, and we're talking about this um, on school, it's just like the sheer like grit, determination and resilience that's needed to be successful with this is so high. And that's why a lot of people end up failing because they think it's going to be easy. Yeah. And it can be gut-wrenching. Like you can be in some very dark places, like as you talked about before. Yeah. Like I want to I wanna hear about, uh, I guess, you going through that. Like what was that? What did you go through? Of course, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's been plenty of them. Like mm. everyone's journey is different. Um, you know, sure. There are people that go out there, smash 10 K in their first month, yep. like good for them, but it is, it wasn't my, it wasn't my situation by any means. So basically after I joined that offer in April, uh, ran through all my savings. I believe I lost about 8,000, something like that. I only made like 4,000 during those four months. Yes. Um, and then I, got, I jumped on a call for a guy named Jack, one, a good friend of mine, and it was for a setting position. So I was staying up until midnight, trying to find offers in, in America. Uh, luckily, this one was Australian-based. And he came from the same program as me. And I don't know, man, he, he saw something in me and said, I'll give you a shot as a closer. And I remember that first week I had done absolutely shocking. Yeah. Way below KPI. <laughs> yeah. I needed the sale. I was attached to the outcome because I, I was behind, I believe, like three grand on my mortgage. Yep. Car payments overdue. Uh, like I was eating two minute noodles and eggs for weeks on end. Like it was, it was tough, man. And I remember he, I had like minus 40 in my bank that Friday. Mm. And I was only on a two week uh, like uh, period. So I gave him a call and I'm like, man, like... I don't know what's going on here. Like I've just, 
I can't seem to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And I remember he said to me, and it really stuck with me, he's like, man, regardless of if, if you make it or not with this offer, you're never gonna give up though, right? So what does it matter? Mm. And that just like switched something in me. I, uh, the next week, back over KPI, started doing really well. Uh, got out of that tough spot, had some money saved up in the bank. And it just it teaches you those lessons. Like when you go to those really dark periods where mm. like you're really questioning yourself and questioning like, am I even doing the right thing? Yeah. And you overcome that. It just really gives you that confidence to know I can go for anything and I'll, I'll figure it out. Uh, but it, it all starts with your mindset. It's, it's, it's so important. And I think so many people neglect it mm -hmm. because they're just so caught up in, you know, the skill the set, which is, yeah, the tactic, exactly. Like, yeah. it's important, but it, it's not everything. If, if you're coming into a call and you're attached to the outcome mm. rather than being attached strictly to your process, you're just not gonna, you're not gonna see anything happen, so. 100%, man, like I, um, I've absolutely had those times. I remember like two years ago, I got overdrafted my account, like negative $350. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow. And like all the way down to, like you mentioned, like just depleting your entire savings account to mm. go into a training. Like I remember like when I started my agency over a year and a bit ago, I had three months left. Otherwise I'd just not go homeless, but I would have had to go back to my parents. Yep. But the cool thing about sales is that I would have always made 10K a month. Like yep. I would have, if I even when went, went back to zero, like I would have been back at 10K a month within 30 days. Yep. And I think there's a very, few skills that can actually enable you to do that. Because how does it feel knowing that you've, you know, a 17K in commissions in a month at 23 years old, how does it feel? Because I know you've invested more into your sales training skills. Yes. How much was the investment? The most recent one? Yep. Uh, 18,000 US. Savage, right? <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's more than I've invested in sales training uh, all in one go, so. Yeah, you've got a really, really good future ahead of you, absolutely. Um, how does it feel though, even though you're at where you're now and you've invested that much more into your sales training, how does it feel to have that skill where you know that you can sell and you can make money for another company? Man, it, it, it's, sometimes it doesn't even feel real, yeah. to, be, to be completely honest. Like, <laughs> it, it's always an interesting conversation when you're sitting at the at the Christmas dinner table and you're explaining <laughs> to everyone what you do yeah. and it just they're like w wait what exactly do you do you you sell things what what do you sell and yeah. oh I sell Stuff. a biz op I sell this <laughs> <laughs> but like it, it just gives you so much confidence because you're not the only tool that you're really using is, is your mouth or if you're doing zoom calls you're using your your presence on the call and yeah. it just it's the most important skill, hands down, in life. Like, second to none, in, in my opinion. Like, I know your relationships with other people improve. Your negotiation skills improve in all areas because you just, you can have genuine conversations with people. Like, the amount of heartfelt conversations I've had since going into sales. Like, you can actually help people. You, of course, everyone gets in it to make money and you yeah. can make a hell of a lot of money, but more importantly than that, you can actually help people. And I think that's the important part. Yeah, I think something I've really ob observed in you, and I think it was really, really great that we were able to catch up like this, is that as I was talking to you over the uh, school platform, there is a difference between people who have it and don't have it. Mm. And sometimes it's very hard to actually teach that. Yeah. Um, you know, for example, if you're watching this right now and you're wondering what having it is, it's almost like an entrepreneurial spark. Like you, would, you have something deep within you that is so rooted at the base that you want to get. You know that you can figure stuff out and you will make it work. No matter what life throws at you, whether or not your savings account gets depleted, whether or not you're investing 18,000 US in your training, um, you just kind of keep going regardless. And it's, uh, I spoke about this with the boys in the community uh, a couple of months ago. The worst way to describe ever is it like, got the dog in him. Yeah. Like, like literally, it's the worst way to describe it, but it's the only way I can put it into words. It's like, you literally just get after it. It's like, Ben Payne recently, you know, Ben Wheeler, Rahul, yeah. like all these other boys, like they're all just getting after it. Even when you fall short in the initial part, because like you mentioned, 
bad offers. Yeah. You could have just stopped at the first bad offer. 100%. You could have stopped at the second bad offer, the third bad offer. But I think a really, really big thing um, that stops people from getting to where they want to go is resilience. 100%. Like, they expect it to be easy. They expect it to be just as, uh, you know, you would be an employee. Yeah. They expect everything to be handed to them. And I think trading that nine to five or employee mindset for a business owner or a founder's mindset is really what's critical for this industry. Um, because no one's going to actively force you to invest more into your sales training. Yep. You have to willingly make that decision on you improving your sales skills because you want to get better. 100%. Um, so I guess for you, what was the biggest decision that, uh, I guess the, the main thing that led you to wanting to spend another 18,000 US on your skills and training? Well, man, I just, I knew that there's, there's, always, that, there's always that uncharted territory. Yeah. And there's always something more to learn. There's always something around the corner. And, and like you're kind of mentioning about how you have to just have that resilience. Like I, I was scared when I, when I still do that. And, and that's kind of one of the big things is I was selling a capital raising service mm. and it was about 10 to 20,000 USD. Got a couple of deals in, but funny enough, they're all around, they're all split pays. They weren't, they weren't paid in fulls. And I just had this epiphany, like, how can I expect someone to pay me $20,000 if I won't even actively put in $20,000 into myself? And investing yourself is always the highest ROI of any investment that you can do. So that was just, and like having that stability is something I have, I have not had yet yeah, since being yeah, in sales. Yeah, yeah. But it's the whole reason I got out of, you know, my day job. Yeah. Because you, so many people, like, they live the same day over and over and over again on repeat. Whereas this highs and lows, this, this, this journey, the hero's journey, so to speak, it, it's, it gets you up in the morning, gets you fired up because you, you constantly have to be at your feet. Um, it makes life exciting. Definitely, definitely. And it's just like one of those things where you just have to keep pushing through. You can't just, even when I was in those dark times, I remember saying to myself like, I'm not going to throw in the towel here. I didn't, this is the whole reason I got into this. Yeah. And I think you can build that. Um, I know one thing that really helped me was like the cost of inaction questions, for example. I was really struggling with them, asking them to people. So I went into the mirror and just constantly asked them to myself and really thought about it. Mm. And all of a sudden it makes sense to why you're actually asking these questions. So. I, I believe a lot of people know what they need to do, but they just won't put in that work to actually go and find the answers. 100%, like that's why I talk about all the times, like if you have a 10K goal, you need to have a 10K effort and a 10K strategy to match it. Most people, whether it's any business model, sales, whatever, usually most people, sometimes, actually, yeah, usually most people don't have the right strategy, but most of the times, it always comes down to a 10K effort. Yep. It always comes down to it. Every time I ask someone if they haven't got results in the RSA training program or with anything, it's always because they haven't put in the effort. Yep. It's so, so simple. But uh, I think one of the most underlooked skills, especially in today's modern economy with mm -hmm. you know, Instagram Reels, TikTok, and all these things that shorten people's attention and focus, is focus yep. and discipline. Um, because... You know, as we talk about in the training program all the time, something as simple as creating a list of your dream companies, doing personal branding, reaching out to them. Yeah. So many people, even with a clear roadmap, just don't do it. Yeah. It's really easy just to procrastinate and uh, not have good discipline nowadays. Uh, that's it. It's just because it's monotonous. It's tedious. Yeah. Like upskilling and learning new things, it, it gets boring after a while. Like, yeah. But it's the boring things that add up and eventually lead to those outcomes. Like, the, the, I, I feel like a lot of people struggle with putting money down. It's yep. always the hardest thing, yep. but it's actually the easiest that you can do because what comes after you put down the money, that's where the work really begins. Yeah. Like you can put yourself in, <clears throat> buy a ticket, but if you don't actually show up uh, to get on uh, the boarding pass, yep, yep. It, it doesn't matter. So I feel like a lot of people just, expect too much yep. when they, really they need to take that responsibility on themselves because 
I mean, 100%. Like, when I spent, um, you know, 20 grand on Jeremy Miner's Inner Circle, mm -hmm. I was like, I'm making this work, like, yeah. 100%. Um, that was, back then, that was probably, like, still, like, 65% of my savings at the time. Mm. Um, and so, it was still incredibly uncomfortable. And I think it's a skill that a lot of people really need to get in the habit of investing themselves because it is so terrifying and scary. Yeah. Even for the first time, like um, there was a gentleman the other day that wanted to join the RSA that already knew the price, yet I had to objection handle him for an hour and five minutes. <laughs> um, because the same thing always came back to the self-belief thing. Yep. Like if you don't have the, like, the actual inner value uh, to believe in yourself and have the confidence you're going to do things, you won't do it. And a lot of people's main concerns primarily are always going to be self-belief yeah a lot of the time because like a lot of the times if someone's asked me like what what, what are your guarantees I'm like i don't have a guarantee brother yeah like well, how can you guarantee your results like i can get your results it just matters if you do the thing exactly um yeah no one cares more about your results than than you do yeah. within yourself like yeah. it doesn't matter any mentor i've ever had like we're meeting today in person you clearly care about me you clearly care about all the students that come through mm. but you're not going to care more about my results than i do yeah and that would be just completely unwise of me to even consider that for a second right so yeah yeah I, I feel like a lot of people just need to take that responsibility on them on their shoulders because like it, it sounds harsh but like no one's really going to come and save you and, and pull you out of your situation it all starts with that self-belief and if you just keep going after it day after day eventually it'll crack like it, it's in i honestly believe it's impossible for you to go after something day in, day out, give it your absolute all, and it not to work. I've never seen it not work. I've never seen someone go 110% all in and never come out the side successful. I've never, never. seen it, like I just no. haven't. <laughs> Going all in on yourself is, that's like the bare minimum because mm. everyone, everyone else that you're seeing that's doing these crazy things and, and living the life you want, mm. that's what they're doing. So if you're not even going all in on yourself, like that, that's the bare minimum, you need to be continuously upskilling you need to be networking with the right people shaking the right hands mm. you know being congruent within all areas of your life eating good like it comes down to that analogy that we all know like an overweight person is only overweight because they have the mindset of an overweight person it's not until they switch that and start eating healthy going to the gym that they then see those results so it all starts in the mind 100 percent. it's not uh do be have it's be do have like you have to be the person before you see the person yes long story short that's really hard for a lot of people because again that identity for them doesn't exist currently at present mm -hmm. and it's always stepping into the unknown that is incredibly uncomfortable incredibly scary big time um because it's cognitive dissonance you're acting as someone that you aren't already yeah and so your brain will fight and do everything it possibly can to keep you in that same position um, and, you know, a lot of people, no matter how good my objection handling skills or yours, <laughs> they will stay the same forever because, yes. again, there's, uh, there's years of patterns and wiring in their brain with the same habits, beliefs, actions, everything like that. Yeah. And um, one of my mentors, Matt, uh, gave a really good point at, uh, about objection handling. He said, look, to be honest, I can't save everybody. And mm -hmm. within an hour sales call, sometimes... I cannot do 15 years of unwiring within an hour and get someone to pay me $5,000, Yeah. right? Sometimes you do have to understand that there are some people that just, you can't physically get them to make a decision or, or change. I see a lot of salespeople have that, um, that mindset of like, oh, if I can't sell this person, it's over, it's yeah. finished. Or that's, it's a reflection of my skill or lack of sales ability. It's never, it's never quite the case. And I think it's, as you're a new sales rep as well, mm every single no and rejection feels quite personal and yeah. it feels like the world's gonna end when you have a bad week or a bad month. Yeah, yeah no, it's definitely one of those things like we're, we're creatures of habit and like, like you mentioned that that wiring is like encoded in us for like a survival mechanism. We're, we're afraid of change. So when you present something to someone that they've never tried before or they're not sure they're gonna make it work, like that's all normal feelings, but it's really, overriding that and having that you know that self-belief and it might take a while you're going to go through plenty of ups and downs yep. but it's just still pushing through like 
combing through a tunnel with a toothbrush just to see that tiny little bit of light poke in you just got to keep going after it man like there's really nothing else to do other than that consistency is what matters mm. in the, the grand scheme of things like i i mean many of you guys know about my story uh if you've watched the youtube channel for a while but same thing as riley like it it doesn't happen instantly some people it does like you mentioned before yeah. sometimes some people get it really quickly or they get a little bit lucky with an offer or whatever it might be um but for the grand scheme of things as majority of you that watch the channel know and riley and myself know that's not everybody no it's just not the the vast majority like those are some uh key denominator denominator metrics that aren't based off the general mass yep. people um and for the most of you watching the channel it will take a long time it will be painful it will suck and you will fail all the time i talk about very often about uh having undesirable results is a critical piece or cornerstone of building block to success exactly like you have to fail you have to have an awkward networking conversation you have to have bad sales calls yep. you have to suck you have to be bad at sales at first to get good yep. but a lot of people aren't really willing to get out of their comfort zone and be stupid or dumb or mm. inexperienced at a skill especially like sales because it's so in my opinion sales the reason most people don't like sales is because it's literally a reflection of your ability yeah yeah that's a, that's a really good point yeah. I, I think that's so important what you said though because you need to get in the the arena yep. like you need to get in there and, and and see what you're made of because like the the thing is losers never actually lose yeah because they don't take that first step to actually try they just always stay comfortable saying that that middle ground but winners lose all the time mm -hmm. like constantly battling things ups and downs and it's it's all part of it and i think that one of the biggest things i learned from sales was just being okay with rejection yeah someone says no it, it's fine like your life doesn't change all that much but like if if, if someone really does want some want something and they believe it can work it's, it's your moral obli obligation to get them out of their own way 100 i mean for yourself personally like, what do you feel like is the been the biggest mindset transi transition you've had over the past like year and a half Ooh. from going to where you are now to, to oh sorry from where you were to where you are now like what do you would say would be one of the biggest mindset transitions you've had do you think it's a good question i'd say the biggest one is just like like I, before i even jumped into sales i didn't really have much belief in myself i always i always yeah. did believe but there's one thing saying you believe in yourself and there's another thing going after it and like putting your actions uh, and just letting your actions speak for themselves I, I i guess that's like the biggest mindset shift i've had would be that no matter what happens even if like you mentioned before if you lose all the money in your bank account i can make it back yeah because i've got my skills to a level where i can make good money from from any place in the world as long as i have wi-fi connection and, and a computer mm. and i'd say the biggest mindset shift is just really narrowing in on that and and believing in myself what what do you what do you feel like's been the biggest uh transition of the way your day goes the way that you think belief systems from working in civil construction like you were before mm -hmm. to now like what what's the differences in freedom and flexibility yeah what does it look like in in terms of daily routine it's much better mm. like I, I feel like a lot of people, and I did go through a phase of this, you can kind of live a little bit too comfortable. Yep. Sleep in a little bit later than you should. Yep. You know, yep. lay around on the lounge in between calls and, and not really <laughs> be focused on, on the mission. But yeah. I'd say now, like, I can wake up at the same time every morning, refreshed. I can cook in my own kitchen. You know, I can go outside and do some training. You know, I, I, I'm comfortable, I'm in my home. I'd say really just like when you come back from from a job that you don't like after being there for 10 hours a day and absolutely exhausted mm. all you want to do is go to bed and get ready to do it again and live for the weekend now it's like completely opposite like i'm i'm keen to get into work and 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 test myself and and push the limits of what i feel is possible and and really go i feel like what's really lacking mm. um in like the modern day workforce and I, I know this is a big reason why i left as well is there's no competitiveness 
Yeah. It was like everyone that gets in the high ticket sales, they're competitive, they're hungry, they want to they want to outdo each other. Yeah. And I think that's so it's so critical. Mm -hmm. Whereas at work, you know, you might be at work with someone else and you're doing more work than them, but they get paid more because they're friends with the boss. Like that stuff doesn't really exist because you you get back what you put in. A, a complete mirror of the actions you're taking daily. Yeah, 100%. I think, um, I'm super curious for your feedback because this is actually so bad it's becoming a recurring theme on the channel. I talk about this all the time. Again, not naming names, but what do you feel like has been the biggest difference from the training program you did before, which was six grand Australian? Yes. To the RSA in comparability, like what are the differences in training, support systems, like... What do you feel like is honest feedback from yourself of like looking at those two in comparison? Yeah. Well, I'd say the big one in terms of like the actual training itself, yeah. it's all like you're still actively selling. You're still actively going to the battlefield every day. So you're constantly able to adapt and actually teach you relevant stuff that is working. That, that was severely lacking in, in another program. I'd say another big one is like the actual support itself is like <laughs> completely miles apart. Like we're meeting face to face, those other guys won't even send you a message back <laughs> or you get lost in the sea of, of other people. And that's one thing about the RSA too. It's, at the moment, it's tight knit. Everyone is in there helping one another, you know, or pushing each other to succeed while still having that, that competitive, uh, I guess you could say edge in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's so important for a community is not only competitiveness, but actual people want to see each other improve. Um, but it's just yeah, miles apart. I wish I put that at, at the start. I feel like maybe I might have not had to go through those first couple of hurdles, but they yeah. still teach you those lessons. So. Yeah, 100%. Um, and the funny thing is, that's such a common response and answer. Mm. And so for me, from a sales perspective, what I try to do from a marketing perspective is try and get in front of more people before they have to go through that. Yeah. Um, because... Originally, what I'd found was obviously with my first mentor, mentor is seventy five hundred bucks. I got nothing, like absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, probably the equivalent to your training that you got, but worse. Yeah. Um, you know, it was filmed on a laptop camera, terrible headphones, terrible production quality. For a seventy five hundred dollar training, I was expecting a lot more. Mm. Uh, but no sales skills. Didn't even get told how to get a job. About seven months in. Mm. And, and when it was given to me, it was like, just send a bunch of DMs to business owners. No, no, no it doesn't work. It's, yeah. it's just outdated. Like I, the guy that sold me on that first offer, um, the, the first training program, mm. nothing but respect for him. Like the fact that he got me out of my own way and got those, um, those insecurities, those doubts, put them out, all out on the table for me to look at and then, you know, I pulled the trigger and made that decision. I often think back, like, when I'm on a sales call with someone, that's how I want them to think of me in a few months' time, in a year's time. Thank God Riley grabbed me by the scruff of the neck and said, hey, man, this is the reality. Like, let, let's do this, man. Yeah, 100%. Like, that is uh, probably one of the biggest blessings of this skill within itself. Um, like, I still get guys, girls, you know, texting me, you know, after years after I sold them and they say mm. basically just thank God, thank <laughs> you for objection handling me for as long as you needed to do or the way that you sold me uh, because I wouldn't be able to build, build the business to where I am today yeah. without, without that extra nudge across the line because yep. so many people really do need that and I think I spoke about this in the ethics of selling uh, more recently on the channel, Dark Side of High Ticket Sales. Um, you know, at least in my belief, if you believe what you're selling is in your prospect's best interest and they've told you that they want it, it's your, in your moral and ethical uh, obligation, obligation to, to, to sell it to them. Because you sell quite an interesting offer. And I want to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so you, the, the offers you sold in the past was you know, an agency coaching training program. Yeah, agency, biz op, uh, capital raising. Yep. Uh, but now, yeah, the uh, NDIS coaching. Yeah, like, um, don't have to say the name of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, 
What's uh, like what what is the offer like? What do you, what do you actually offer? Like what do you sell? I think the guys would be interested in the hearing that. Yeah, so I sell uh, a coaching program for parents that have autistic children. Mm. So as you as you can imagine, a lot of emotion yep. uh, within the calls, and uh, like I truly believe that we have a really good program and we help a lot of people. Um, one big thing that was missing from a lot of the other offers is like an actual sea of testimonials, a, a sea of good reviews online. Yeah. And you can actually speak with the fulfillment side of things and, and get those tight feedback loops. Uh, it, it's just miles apart. Like I believe we got a, a venture capitalist looking to invest in the business. Yeah. So it's like an actual business yeah. compared to like some guy's side hustle online yeah. that you just contracted out to do. Yeah. 100%. I think that's such an important thing that, again, own, this is a skill that only comes from experience. Mm. It can only be taught from experience. Um, and that's why I think it's so important for this space with the guys inside the RSA community because you can just reach out to me and go, hey, I'm looking at this offer. What do you think? Yeah. I've had guys, like, if you select a wrong offer, it can waste weeks, oh, a man. month, or a couple months, <laughs> or even up to a year of your time because yep. you're so... Um, naive to like what is actually good and is going to make you money. Mm -hmm. And one of the key processes or the key vetting questions or screening operations you need to have as a salesperson is how good is the actual fulfillment? Yep. Do they have a ton of testimonials? Do they have case studies? Not is it going to allow you to sell more um, and be much easier to sell and overcome those trust objections and concerns, mm -hmm. but do you actually feel really good what you're selling? It's so important. You need yep. to have full conviction in your in what you're selling because it it's like this, you just honestly reflect you reflect how you feel on the call like if, if you're you can't overcome an objection that you know is kind of true or you yeah. you can't overcome within yourself <laughs> yeah so if you know if you know the offer shit and someone points point blankly says yeah i'm not going to do this this looks pretty crap there's no chance in hell you're going to overcome that <laughs> but why would you though? Get like, you don't want to sell someone into a training that's obviously not going to be effective or get the person results. Like uh, um, Rahul, because he did like 7K last month, I think. Okay. It's really cool. Yeah, nice. We'll see him on the channel soon. Um, he mentioned that, you know, the current offer that he's selling, the fulfillment isn't as good as it mm, needs to be. Yeah, and, yeah. I'll, and he's like, well, what do I do? And I was like, find a different offer because <laughs> yeah. like because he's like oh well you know like I'm, I'm selling people into it and they're asking for refunds in the first week or second week it's really uh -huh. common and i'm like that's a problem like yep. that's that's not just a oh like this is this is an issue like this is a serious problem that should be giving you red flags on offer if they don't fix it yep. there's an element of um stress and tension on a fulfillment mm -hmm. like Yes, if you're scaling things up, um, you know, especially if you get really good at sales, you can be classed as what's called an offer breaker. Um, pretty good title to have. It's yeah. when you go into a business and you sell too much and you literally just break the fulfillment system. Oh, um, yeah, that's a, that's a nice title. Yeah, I've got a, I've got a couple of friends who have, have done that. Um, that's a different story, but if you're going in and the fulfillment's not good or the fulfillment starts to break and it's like not looking like it's going to improve with the business owner, you shouldn't stick around for very long because it also impacts your belief in your sales ability too. Yeah. I somewhat agree. I know you've told me some, some really hard truths along yeah. the way. And one of them is like, oh, I'm not sure if I should have two offers at once. This other offer might get mad. Mm. And you just said to me, who gives a shit about the other <laughs> offer? Like you get paid for what you produce, man. If that's not paying you enough, like what are you going to do? You're just going to sit there and go broke? Yeah. And exactly. it's such an important one to know because I, I, it's happened to me plenty of times. Sticking around on an offer for a little bit too long mm. and then you, at the end of the day, they don't really care. They're not going to pay your bills for you. They're not going to you know, uh, pay my mortgage when I'm down $400. It just yep. doesn't happen. So you need to be very selfish of your time and very selective in, in who you choose to work with, uh, which is so important with the whole the screening process of the offers that you teach mm. is you are interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you. Like it, it needs to be um, like a, that reciprocity between the two of you. You answer uh, very truthfully and, and so will they. So I know that's a, so important getting the right offer. Yeah, because I think 
So many people I see, because I'm, I'm coaching another training program um, as well that you know, helps people get into high ticket sales. It's like a 500 pound course. Mm -hmm. A lot of the guys come in there with the wrong expectation of um, you know, cold calling roles or cold DM prospecting roles, which are the mm -hmm. worst that I've ever seen, by the way. Like they're, they're next level, like, um, you know, volunteer positions, yeah. basically. Yeah. Um, a big thing that I see a lot of people in the high ticket sales space, especially the people that are new without the proper guidance, um, can go into roles where they uh, literally just become a unpaid volunteer. Yep. Or like you said before, doing all this unpaid work doing these things you know you shouldn't be and working, doing 50% of the work for five to 10% of the cut. Yeah, it's just, not, it's, it's ridiculous. And it's so common. Yeah. It, it, like I remember like back when I first started, all I could find was bad offers. Yep. And, and now I can just spot them a mile away yep. because you just know what questions to ask them and you can figure it out so quickly. And yeah, I, I know that's unfortunately it's just so common these days. Yeah, well, because I mean, in the high ticket sales space, because, I mean, like the general statistic for most businesses failing within the first two years is incredibly high for traditional businesses. Yeah. But with high ticket sales businesses and coaching businesses, literally anybody can just say that they're a guru now or a coach yeah. or they're an expert. And all they have to do is buy someone else's training and then just go and copy and label it, yeah. which is what majority of my industry does for the high ticket sales industry never sold in their life, maybe done it for a very short while, don't really have the proof to back it up and it's very evident and so. Yep. And these guys are just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Same sales training, same outreach training, same stuff, interview training. Um, you probably would have been familiar with what you saw before um, yep. in the previous training. Show up on time and dress well and look presentable. Yep. That's only gonna get you so far. Yep. Um, every other salesperson has that edge against you. Like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's level five market sophistication. Like yep. people are getting better. Yeah. People are doing more of the, the new tricks. They're learning more. So you have to just always be a step ahead. So if you have someone there that's guiding you, that's already walked those, those steps prior, then you're, you're in the right, you're in going the right way, I, I guess you could say, but, um, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> no, you're right. Um, what I was saying before was with the, the whole like filtration method or like vetting companies and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like what I was saying before is because people can just pick up that skill so easily and just start teaching it. Everybody tells you they're the best business owner in the world. And like for a lot of new sales reps again, they're like, oh, this guy's doing 20K a month. He's like, we're ready to go. I'm gonna scale to 10K a month. Mm -hmm. Like just do the simple math, dude. If they're doing 20K a month, then maybe if they're collecting yeah. half their cash up front, which is what you're gonna get paid on, Yep. You might have the opportunity to maximum make $1,000 a month. But most new salespeople can't see that and it's through lack of experience. And that's why I feel very privileged to create that space for a lot of you guys to where mm. you can just shoot me a message and be like, look at this offer. I think it's good. I don't know if you think it's good as well. Can you help me better? Yep. Um, because people will eventually start really starting to actually understand how effective networking is a year from now, two years from now, mm -hmm. that plays to our advantage, it plays to everyone inside the community's advantage because yeah. it's so easy to get in front of everybody. Whereas I think networking is gonna become more common and more standard procedure yeah. a year or two years from now. But the big thing that I've found anyway, is it doesn't matter because people don't put in the effort. No. Anyway. No, it's sad. Yeah. And, and the thing with networking is so many people teach it the wrong way. Yep. As in, you know, take, take, take where it should be the complete opposite. Mm. How can I give you, someone who's higher on the ladder than me, how can I give you a tremendous amount of value? And like, if you wanna work on an offer that you really like, like offer to call all these old no-shows, you know, like, because everyone says, oh, you, you, um, you're free because you're commission only, but the business owner's paying for those leads. Yeah. So, you, there's always, there's always something you can give to others, people that are in similar um, level as you. Role play with them, help them out, teach them what you've done wrong and, and how they can improve. And all of a sudden it, it comes back. The world's funny like that, but I've seen it play out multiple, multiple times. 
Dude, tell us about your goals this year. Tell us about what you're looking to do because things have changed so quick for you. Oh man, yeah. And it's really cool to see that because I love seeing that with you guys where it's like achieve results. Obviously, you know, for example, like it's taken you about approximately like a year and a bit to get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Others faster as well. But it's like, it happens so quickly you don't really rationalize what's going on. You yes. feel like it's, <laughs> yes. it happens so quickly that you just don't really stop and reflect and like, holy shit, I'm making over six figures a year, fast, you know, approaching to multi six figures and I can go wherever I want. I can work with wherever I want. Like, what are your plans for this year? Where do you want to travel? Do you want to, you know, stick in the same place? Like, what's the goal? Yeah, it's an interesting one. Just because I've, you know, back when I bought the house in 2021 at the absolute peak of the real estate market because I know a lot of people get told, you know, go to work, buy a house and then, you know, pay it off. And I kind of got sold that lie as well. So I've got that to kind of deal with, but like what you said is so true. I've been so caught up in like the day to day. How can I execute this day perfectly? How yeah. can I do this? That sometimes you, you, you don't even take a look back at how far you've already come yeah. and, and what's ahead. Yeah. But like I'm going to going to Dublin in April. That's going to be sick. I was telling you about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll stop by in Dubai, see a good friend there. And man, I don't really know. I just, all my goals at the moment are yeah. just really. And it might, some people might think this is uh, materialistic or or whatever, but it, it's really just income goals, so I can finally give myself some some stability, mm -hmm. where then I can you know, start to make some good cash flows and then decide what to do with that later. If I want to take all of December off, which I will this year. Yeah, yeah, I learned, yeah. I learned the hard way yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's always a hard learning for, yeah. like, it, looked, it took me two years to look at that in the face and go, okay, <laughs> December is a bad sales month. Yeah. Like, it's for, it's for everyone. Oh, man. And even, even bits of January as well sometimes. Yeah, it can be for sure. I, I remember I was working uh, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve because I just got on the new offer for being burnt with the last <laughs> offer and just oh, you got it. But that's what I mean. That's that 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 hunger and determination. Like even though now, I've, you know, most people say really good money. It's like I'm still putting in the same hours every day. I'm still working the weekends. I'm still reviewing my calls. I'm still role playing. Still helping other people that are one step on the ladder below me. Like I'm still doing those same. The same things that got me to the dance are what I'm going to continue to keep doing every day. 100%. So even like, man, I don't, ex I don't see much changing at the, at the moment. Yeah. Now, I think th there's two things there. A big thing that you want to really start looking at is a little bit more longer term. Mm. Um, I think this is a very youthful thing, especially because we're both the same age. So yep. um, it's really hard to expand the time horizons a little bit and look instead of a couple days or a couple weeks or a couple months like five or ten years down the line yeah um which is going to be a really really big thing that you'll have to start incorporating it's something that i do personally as well now like i start you know plotting and planning out a little bit longer term mm -hmm. but the other thing as well is you know for a lot of you guys that are watching understand that even though riley's where he is he still like he mentioned does those activities that got him to where he is now but then more uh, it's really, really, really easy to get comfortable at this. When you start to get that initial upswing and that momentum, it's really easy to stay comfortable. Yeah. And that's why I think it's um, really cool to see him invest, you know, 18,000 US in more sales training skills. Um, and it just shows me all the telltale signs of a very successful person, um, especially in the future. Your income will continue to grow and grow and grow. And the same thing for myself as well. Uh, even with the RSA, working sometimes harder than I was when I was selling probably. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, still working 12 hours a day sometimes, sometimes they're less, sometimes they're more, but it's still a relentless execution of determination and wanting to win. Still investing in sales training, still learning, you know, for ways that I can help you guys get better results. Um, still investing myself to grow the business. All these things still happen, they still occur. But a lot of people think that once you're past that initial stage, you hit that 10K month milestone, it just stops. No, no. Too many people get in, in, entitled. Like they'll, they'll buy a bad sales training and then they'll think, well, I already paid for this sales training. Why would I go and pay for another one? Yep. When they're not looking at the, at the perspective of just because it, it, it didn't work out then doesn't mean you, you exit the arena and don't go out and give it another crack. And that's just one thing I've... 
that I've always done is even when I've got to this this new uh, record month for myself, straight away I go and buy more sales training because I'm just I, I'm just so relentless in that pursuit of of getting more, getting more, getting more yeah. that I know eventually I'll probably max out somewhere for a sales rep unless I start going selling yachts or <laughs> private jets or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then you know that 30k, 40k months, then it might be. Then it might be time to kind of reflect and then start to plan things. But uh, yeah, I feel like I'm, and this might be a fault of mine. I'm happy to admit where sometimes I I do go wrong, but I'm just so caught up in the the pursuit. Mm. And sometimes it's hard to kind of extend those those time frames. And it, and it absolutely is. Um, it is really hard to start thinking longer term, especially when you're a lot younger. I've observed this after you know coaching thousands of guys yep. who are on the younger side of the spectrum. Um, which is, it's just a very important thing of just reflecting, really. Yeah. Sitting down, journaling, like, cool, like, I've just made $18,000 this month. Like, it's fucking insane. <laughs> um, but then starting to project and plan for the future because you will achieve what you plan, yeah. but you won't what you don't. That's right. So being able to just really plot out how much money do I want to make, all these other types of things. Like, I actually spoke to a multimillionaire the other day, um, got on with him for half an hour, and one of the biggest takeaways I had from the conversation was primarily, I said, I have this amount of net worth goal and I want to achieve that in three to five years. Mm-hmm. And he said, okay, but why that figure, right? Why is that important to you? Well, I was like, well, you know, if I get this, it's just more money than I could ever imagine that I'd ever want to spend. He's like, okay, but like, what do you want that fixed amount for? Is there a house that you want? Is there a mortgage that you want? Is there a car lease payment? Do you want to have... a month in holiday spend. Like, what Mm. is the number actually representing? Because otherwise, it's all just an empty figure. And you keep scaling and scaling and scaling without the need of continuing to want more. And it's so easy to get in that trap in that space of going to 40, 50K a month in commissions, but then going, why am I even doing this? Yeah, Creating a life that you actually didn't want in the first place. Because the reason a lot of people get into sales or try and make money online is to get more of that freedom and that flexibility for themselves yeah and i mean even just I, we spoke about this earlier but i kind of want to hear it from you again like having that freedom and that choice knowing that you can just fly anywhere in the world like how does that feel comparatively with your old circle of friends things like that yeah it's kind of crazy like it, and it gets to the point where sometimes when you're experiencing these things and you and you can't quite communicate it to other people and you wish that they could kind of see it as well yeah. and experience it for themselves because it, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Like there's nothing that even comes close to it. You, like, like you do often, go globe trotting, and you're still making money on, on the way, which is the dream for a lot of people. And it's crazy that, like, that that's actually a reality. That's something that can be done. It's just like, I wish, I wish more people could actually experience what that feels like. It's, it's hard for me to kind of put into words. Yeah, it's so difficult to communicate it to someone because it's so new, mm. it's so different. Uh, and it's not, like I spoke to uh, Ben Payne on the interview this week as well. It's like, like you mentioned, explaining it to other people. It's like, well, what do you do? Sales, what do you sell? Well, just sell this thing. Like it's, <laughs> it's so hard to communicate. Um, you know, oftentimes back then, like I literally would just tell people that I work in a bar or something. Yeah. Because it's so complex for people to understand, even though it's, you know, for us, it's really simple. Yeah. But for a lot of people that, you know, maybe watching or that are looking at high ticket sales in general, it's so, it's so hard for someone to understand. Yeah, it really is. Like, I, I, I'm i going to start doing that as well. I work at the local swimming pool or something just because <laughs> you end up in these conversations where they're getting confused and then it goes down all these other rabbit holes. But you can really... It's funny because you see the way that they question you about it, mm. and I'm like, man, I'd be, I'd be getting this information out way quicker than this. <laughs> yeah, no, 100. percent I think um, for you speaking to those people that are maybe looking at high ticket sales for a while now, um, and they're unsure whether or not it's real, or they're kind of just sitting on the fence of like whether or not they should pursue it or not. Like, what would you suggest to someone who's kind of in between, in the middle, kind of just not want to take that step. Yeah. I'd say the first thing, you, you really need to identify your North Star or your, or your mission. 
like what what do you want from your life like what do you want that to look like what do you want that to feel like who do you want to help what do you want to buy like all of these things you need to identify that make that real because once you've identified where you're going then you need to put something behind you that that hungry tiger of the reality of if you don't get there because that's going to push you just as hard as that goal will and once you've done that it's really just go after it man dive head first you, you can sit in the boat all day wondering how cold the water is it's not until you dive in that you're going to find out and it's never going to feel it's never going to feel comfortable it's never going to feel like the right time yeah you're never going to be ready for it but you just have to have that like we've been t talking about all day like the self-belief the determination that you're going to achieve it because you're never going to give up and if you never give up then what have you got to lose yeah i think um having that blind faith is really really important um and look to trust somebody online especially for like a mentorship as well like you know as well as i that it's incredibly difficult to overcome that hurdle and that obstacle of believing in someone and placing a trust in someone. It is very important that you need to take those decisions very carefully as you know very well yourself, yes. the first training you did and then I did and majority of like, I'd say probably like 80% of my investments in myself, it's probably like 170K now, we're good. 20% of them were like lighting cash on fire. Like quite <laughs> literally, I could have just thrown that out the window and that would have been uh, kumbaya and that was about it um, but it is incredibly hard to place that trust in someone and like for you how do you think that you overcame that um, what would you suggest to someone who's like kind of like I can't trust someone online with thousands of dollars for mentorship like what would you recommend to that person honestly if you are if you look at high ticket sales and you're sitting outside the cafe and you're going I want to sit in there and experience what that's like people are constantly giving you money over the line that just met you yep. 20 minutes ago so if you can't actively do that in yourself how can you expect anyone else to do it yeah. so i'd say for the people that really want it and are just sitting there and just need that little push like what are you waiting for because the clock's on and there's no turning back now so mm. you either just go go all in on yourself and know you're going to work it out and know that the person that you're investing in, you have that trust, you've got nothing, you've got nothing really to, to worry about as long as you're actively showing up every day. Like that, putting the money down is the easiest part. Mm -hmm. It's what comes after it that's where a lot of people stumble. Like I know when I first got into sales, a few of the guys that I was role playing from, uh, with, from the States, mm. they, like obviously it wasn't the best program, right? <laughs> yeah. And... I looked at it, they added me on LinkedIn way back then. Mm. And I went and checked them not long ago. And, you know, one of them's gone back to his day job. One of them's gone, you know, he's a golf cabbie. And it's kind of sad, but it's yeah. like, I figured it out. Why didn't they? We had the same training. Yep. We made the same mistake, but someone kept pushing and someone gave up on themselves. So as long as you know that you're never going to quit and you're, you can deal with the stress of, this is going to be extremely difficult because it's an old saying, right? If it was easy, everyone would do it. And it's definitely not easy. No. But once it's cracked, once you've got the right skills, you've got the right circle, it just becomes so much easier. And it just builds up like that, that snowball effect. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're surrounded by people who don't believe in these things, it's going to be incredibly easy to stay in that reality. Yes. Um, like, uh, you know, Saxon who you recommend yeah. the, the RSA training to, um, you know, he would speak about all the time, especially in like the tradie environment mm. of how easy it is to really slip into the cracks there of just like... <laughs> Big time. <man>. Oh. <laughs> because it, like a lot of people have that, that broken mindset yeah. of this is the way life is. Yeah. You're supposed to go work hard every day and, and not really know that there is this other side to this where we've got these crazy guys who are making money online, you know, making people's yearly salary in a month. And Saxon, yeah, Saxon, was, it was kind of cool to see because Saxon kind of seen, seen my journey yeah. and seen where I was heading. And he was constantly hitting me up. He's like, man, I want to do this. Like, how do I do it? And I was like, 
man, I'm not sure. It seems like you're <laughs> half in, half out. Yeah, yeah. And I said, well, if you're serious, buy, buy the RSA, go all in on yourself. He's like, man, I've, I don't have the money for it. I'm like, well, you got a car. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. so he sold his car. Yeah. Got the deposit, didn't have enough for the for the next payment. Yep. Made enough money to make it happen and got resourceful and, and took that action on himself. 100%. And now he's he's crushing it. He just got promoted to a closer. I'm so happy. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah. good because it's a childhood friend. Yeah, it's you so see cool, make man. that leap too. It's, 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 it's amazing. That's sick, dude. Someone to experience it with. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, um, it's always really cool to see when someone backs themselves and, and becomes resourceful because... Mm. Even investing in training, sometimes you may not have the money, but having the resourcefulness to go and find that money is really important. Yeah. Why don't you ask friends, family, you sell a car, like do whatever you have to do and find out what is most important to you and what you're gonna prioritize. Yes. But the big thing is, for a lot of you guys watching, is that it's always going to be risky, right? It's <laughs> never going to not be risky. Everything's always gonna be risky. And a big question I wanna ask yourself is, you know, what is more risky? staying in the same position that you're in now or taking that leap of faith and trying to move towards that direction. Um, because like Riley mentioned before, some people drown, but the only people that drown are the people that give up. Yes. Like for myself, I had all the odds going against me, right? Not super academic in high school, try to figure it out, $7,500 investment. Group sucked, community wasn't great. I had to figure mm. all this stuff out on my own. Took me almost a year and a half to like get on an actual good offer. Yeah. A year and a half, <laughs> um, and even that, then I didn't even make money for months. Could have given up, like could have just stopped doing it and just never pursued it. Yeah. And I could have just gone back to university and just and, studied something. And the, the reality is, a lot of people have said, "Well, at least you tried." Yeah. And, and giving you that pat on the back, but I feel like that's the biggest. Coming back to when you mentioned the biggest mindset shift, like I know that that's not good enough. And, and I'm sure you do as well. Yeah. It's like you don't want those. You, we don't do it for a pat on the back. No. We do it because we're we're passionate and we really are pushing for something greater than ourselves. Yeah, I think uh, that is a level of mindset that is absolutely required to win. Like you have to want it so bad. Like I I've, I describe this feeling with all the guys that interview on the channel. Um, the guys that are crushing it. It's it's that just like this pit in your chest that you wake up every single morning like I'm not where I want to be yet like you have to have that level of like you want it as bad as you want it to breathe yeah it, it's almost like a like an illness it's just Literally. absolutely sickening because you want it so bad yeah but that as long as you're putting in because everyone wants it like yep. everyone wants to make money yep. everyone wants to travel the world Every, everyone wants it but there's a difference between wanting to want and actually putting in that work to actually get it. And unfortunately, it isn't always the case, but. Action is always the biggest roadblock for most people in general. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I think we'll, we'll tie it off there. Yeah, sweet, man. Yeah, so it was, it was great. Yeah, it was, it was great bringing you on, man. Um, obviously, you've got a very promising future ahead of you, so I'm very excited for that. Thank you, man. But um, very cool seeing Riley's journey you know, from going back to the conversation we had almost over a year ago, you know, looking to take out equity on his home to join the RSA training program to now, man, there's, uh, there's nothing cooler than uh, seeing other guys succeed and especially Australian people as well. Yeah, um, yeah. For all of you guys that are American <laughs> across the world, love you as well. But for Australian people, uh, it's just a really, really big cultural thing where you don't see as many Australians succeeding as I think I'd hoped to. Yeah. Um, and just seeing guys go from the belief systems they had before, the career, to transitioning to doing this full time, there's nothing more fulfilling than seeing that transformation and being able to give that space for you guys to have that transformation in full. Yeah, it's amazing. Sweet guys, well, hopefully you enjoyed that one. Um, if you wanna follow Riley on any of his socials, I'm gonna probably plug down his Facebook or his Instagram somewhere there. Um, always going to be building your personal brand as a sales rep. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video.